Hey guys, this is Taylor at Go Power Sports. Today we're going to be doing our Stage 2 kit and it's going on the Tillotson 212cc engine. Perfect. We're going to start with our Tillotson 212cc pull start engine, billet flywheel, hot 265 cam, the 6773 billet rod. We're going to be putting our T4 Tillotson oil in it, our center exit low drag pipe, the gaskets hardware and the 22 millimeter aftermarket Makuni kit. In this kit you have two different cam options. You can choose between the Hot 265 or the Mod 2. We went with the Hot 265 camshaft for this engine. It's going to make more power at the top end of the RPM range and in this kit it'll rev to about 8400 RPM. The Mod 2 you're going to max out somewhere around 7500 RPM and it's going to make power a little lower in the power band. We're going to start this build by tearing this Tilson 212 engine completely down to a bare block. We'll start with the exhaust. This is a 13 millimeter socket. Go ahead and cut off this protective guard and get the keyway. use an 8 mil socket to take off the throttle linkage. Take out the spark plug. This is the 13 16 socket. Now we're going to take off this side cover, the flywheel shroud. It's going to be four 6mm bolts. You're going to use an 8mm socket. Next step, we can remove the gas tank. This is an 8 millimeter socket. And then on the front, to take off these nuts, you'll need a 10 millimeter. Now we can go ahead and get the flywheel off. First step, loosen up the coil, or remove the coil. This is an 8 millimeter socket. At this point you can go ahead and get the governor arm out of the way. You can just pry on these, open up the hole a little bit, and they should slide right off. If 
for the flywheel nut that is a 21 millimeter take the fins and the cup off you will need to keep the cup the fins you don't need with the nut back on you can pry on the flywheel just a little bit and hit it from the outside and it'll bust the flywheel off Remove the valve cover next, that's an 8 millimeter socket. At this point you can turn the engine on its side. We're going to take off the side cover. You have 6 bolts, this is a 10 millimeter socket. Okay, now we have the side cover off. First step, line up the marks. We're going to slide out the stock cam. Take out the lifters. And the push rods will come right behind them. Next, you're going to rotate the crank around. about there you'll use a 10 millimeter wrench to get these raw bolts off rod bolts are off This is the cap of the connecting rod. And you're going to rotate the engine around and bring the piston all the way to the top. Then keep rotating. Then you can slide your crank right out. For this build, we are going to leave the head on and we're just going to change out the rod by lowering the piston all the way to the bottom. We'll take the circlip off and then you can slide the rod out. Clip is out. Now we can go a little bit further. Gently slide out the wrist pin. And the old rod is out. With the crank out of the way, now it's really easy to take out the governor parts. Each of these shafts that were taken out of the motor do have washers on them. And this one likes to stick up there in the grease. Make sure you get that out. The next one the easy way to get this out is to use a hammer and punch. There's going to be multiple different pieces that come out when you do this. 
and you want to make sure you have all of them. You're going to have the rod itself that's pressed into the block. You're going to have the white cap. You're going to have the governor's spool. And you will have two washers. One washer is on the outside. The second washer is on the inside. And it always sticks to the block, but make sure you get it out. I'm going to reuse two of the washers that we pulled out. We'll use those for washers when we put the self-tapping bolts back in. This is an item we sell on the website. They're really handy for doing this. This is a quarter inch self-tapping bolt. I'm going to put a washer on each one and just a tiny dab of Loctite. So you have the one up top and you have the other one right here in the side. Bring the engine back around and we're going to get all the oil out of the bottom of the engine. That grease that they put up there on the top hole, get that out. While you're cleaning the engine, I like to flush out these drain holes. We're going to take out the front and the rear oil drain bolt. If you have a compressor, I would use it. You can go ahead and blow out the inside of the block. It's going to make sure that you get everything out of this engine. First thing we're going to do is put the oil drain bolts back in. Before we start assembling the bottom half of this engine, we have our billet rod out. This is the 6773. We're going to take out the rod bolts. These are tightened to spec for the final machining process, so you'll need to bust those loose. This is a, a 12 point quarter inch socket. Before you install this on the crank and set your bearings, you need to check your crankshaft for the actual outside diameter and for uh, seeing if it's out of round or if it's in spec. It's best to use a pair of outside micrometers, but if you have a really good set of digital calipers, then they will work just fine. So it, you're looking for one inch, 180 thousandths, plus or minus five thousandths. Everywhere I measure on this, I'm getting one inch, 179 and a half thousandths. And that is perfect. Especially if this is a used engine, you, you want to check for how smooth the crankshaft surface is as well. You want it to feel exactly like a bearing. You want it to be smooth to the touch. If you feel any any blemishes, you really need to have it polished or replaced. For assembling this stuff, you really want to use either the break-in oil that you will be running or in our case the T4 oil which we'll use 
for a break in then we'll change it and run it again so if you look at these bearings they have an oil groove cut into them which gets fed through the outside of the billet rod when this is spinning and sloshing around in the oil you get oil penetrating through here and then also through the dipper that's where most of your oil is going to come from so these slots you line up press them into place For the bolts, you definitely want to get oil on these threads as well. Now over here at our crankshaft, this is the way that the rod's going to be coming down from the piston. You want to work these in slowly. Do not tighten one side completely and then the other. You really want to go back and forth. From here I work them back and forth until both of the gaps are closed. Then you will take each one to 90, approximately 90 inch pounds. That was 90. Ninety. Now we're going to bump up to 130. In the same order, so we did the bottom first. Now 170. Before we install the billet rod onto the piston, we're going to check the wrist pin for size 716 thousandths. That's right where these Tillotson 212s are. Predator's going to be smaller, clone's going to be smaller. That's why this rod is made specifically for this engine is the wrist pin size. Okay, that checks out. Now, again, we're going to use the oil that we're running in the engine. Okay. Your rod will slide all the way down to the other wrist pin. And this one, you're just going to snap back in. After you get the rod on and pushed all the way up inside the cylinder, then we can slide in the crankshaft. From this part forward, you want the engine either on a stand that you're building on or laying flat on the table. You're not going to want to lay it on its back. During this process, you do want to be very careful not to scratch up the inside of the bearing, your rod bearing, 
or the serrations on the rod and the cap. Put all on your rod bolts again before assembly. Second bolt. We're just going to run these down finger tight for now and we'll get the torque wrench. We're going to do the exact same process for installing the rod as we did when we were setting the bearings. We're going to start at 90 inch pounds. That was 90. Now we will take the bottom to 90. Bump up to 130. Do the top first. Now finish them off at 170. hundred and seventy inch pounds on the rod bolts. We do get calls from time to time where people break the rod bolts. The leading cause of that is either not seating the bearings properly or what I believe is probably the most common reasons is a torque wrench is not to spec. Maybe it's from Harbor Freight and those really need to be broken in. They come pretty stiff. Or if you lay the engine on its back on the crank if you have this in a bind where it's at an angle, that can cause these raw bolts to break. So I have it standing up, there's no pressure on the crank, everything is free, you shouldn't have any problems. Next step, before we put the cam in, we're going to put in the lifters. Again, put in oil. And go ahead and kind of line up your timing mark. That makes it easier to put the lifters and everything in. You're going to want to point that timing mark right at the journal for the cam. Both lifters are in. You're going to oil the lobes and the journals. The timing marks are lined up. I'm going to get some oil all over these parts. Get it on the gears. Just in case we miss anything. You don't want anything dry during startup. Before you put the side cover on, you have two dowel pins on these stock engines. Put the dowel pins back in. Side cover gasket, line it up on the dowels. Gonna oil all the threads on the side cover bolts. For the stock side cover bolts, 
you're going to take them to 17 foot-pounds. So you want to go in a crisscross pattern. You do not want to take them to 17 foot-pounds right off the bat. Now this is the factory torque setting for these engines. Again, 17 foot-pounds. But on a high revving engine like this, it's not uncommon for these to be able to back out at 17 foot-pounds. So after 17 foot-pounds, I like to give them just a little bit more. Now if you're using grade 8 bolts, you can take those to about 220 inch-pounds or the stud kit, you take those to 20 foot-pounds. The stud kit is really the best choice on here. Before we put the push rods in, we're going to break loose this jam nut. This is a 9 millimeter. back out the adjuster little bit of oil on the push rod Same thing on the other side. With the timing marks where they were when we installed the cam, you know your piston's already pretty much at top dead center. So shine a flashlight down in the spark plug hole or a screwdriver and just barely rotate it around, make sure it's exactly at the top. When you know you're at the top, there's a tiny bit of wiggle where you can't even really see the piston move, you know you're exactly at top dead center at that point. You're going to take your feeler gauge. We are going to set, set it at three thousandths. That'll be on the intake and the exhaust. Exhaust side is good. Now the intake. Just get that jam nut started. Jam that all the way down. Check with the three thousandths again. It is a good idea to check with your neck size up. We will try the four. And it will not go even with wiggling the rocker. After you run the engine through a heat cycle, you definitely want to check your lash again. We're going to get some oil on the springs, some oil in between the top of the valve and the rocker. And also on the rocker shafts. And valve cover back on. Next up is the billet flywheel. You're going to remove the woodruff key. Then we will lap this, this flywheel onto the crank 
with some fine grit grinding compound. It does not take much. Basically just do a couple little dabs around. You want to apply even pressure on the flywheel all the way around. Looks even all the way around. We're going to wipe this off and then you will look actually look at the two surfaces. So before you lapped it on it was completely smooth just like a polished finish. Now it should look a lot rougher but it should be even all the way around. If it's even all the way around you can go ahead and finish cleaning off the compound and then install the flywheel. Crank looks clean. Same treatment on the flywheel. Make sure you get all of that grinding compound out. Wipe it a few times. You really want to make sure you get everything off. And if you look at the inside of the flywheel now, you can see that it has more of a rough texture, but it looks really good. We know that the flywheel is mated to the crank all the way around. On the timing key, if you have to grab it out with pliers, which most time you do, it'll leave little indentations. So we're just going to lightly sand that off. Make sure that this is smooth. Okay, timing key is good. Okay, we got the flywheel on. We're going to run this nut down with the impact just to get it started. Now we're going to set up our a stop on the crank so the crank will stay in place and then we can torque this flywheel to 65 foot pounds. For our crankshaft stop, we're going to use this is one of our brake drum slash sprocket adapter hubs. These are for a three quarter inch axle. These slide right on the crank. I had to drill these holes out larger, but this was very easy to make work. Put two 5 16 24 bolts into the side cover. Now our crankshaft cannot spin. 65 foot pounds. That was the 65. Check it again. The recommended minimum coil gap on these engines is 30 thousandths. We have found that at 30 thousandths it can really drag down the engine. We usually shoot for 55 thousandths. Sometimes higher, sometimes a little lower. 55 thousandths seems to run really good on most engines. So we're going to use our calipers on some business cards that is 55 thousandths. We can now use these as a shim spin it around so that your coil grabs on the magnet push in on the coil at the at the same time as you're tightening it Okay, 
Before we put the flywheel shroud back on, we're going to remove these studs and go ahead and install our 22 millimeter Makuni kit. To remove these studs, you can either use a stud remover. This is a cool little socket that as you rotate it, it grabs the threads and will back it out. Or you can use two six millimeter nuts, jam them together, back the stud out that way. Or if you're throwing them away, you don't really care about damaging them, you can use some pliers. We're now going to install the 22 millimeter aftermarket Makuni kit. To do so, you are going to bolt the carburetor to the manifold first. Look through the back side of the manifold and make sure that the O-ring, visually check that the O-ring is sealed evenly all the way around. After you have that done, then you'll bolt this whole assembly onto the head. Okay, we have the bolts started. They are not tight. This, how you angle the carb will vary depending on how you mount the engine. This engine is going to be going on a tilt mount, so we want the carburetor to be tilting slightly to the left. So we're going to line up the holes with the carburetor at an angle look through the back side of the manifold and I see there is going to be no air leak the o-ring is sealed evenly all the way around this is a 10 millimeter wrench on the nut side and a 5 millimeter allen okay both sides are tight line up your gasket onto the manifold This will be the same size Allen wrench as before, 5 millimeter. Carburetor done. Spark plug this is the AR3910X. There is no gap. To check on these, if you are using like an NGK, the BP6ES, um, you want about a 30 thousandths gap. This is the smaller spark plug socket. This one's going to be the 5 eighths for this auto light. Cap on. flywheel shroud. You have your four six millimeter bolts, putting those in with an eight millimeter socket. And on these Tillotsons, you have your ground that hooks into this front plate. Connect the kill switch. This end's going to stay open until you hook up your kill switch that's either on your mini bike or your go kart. We are putting the fuel tank back on this engine. You're going to fish your fuel line in between the shroud and the engine block. Get your studs in. And the back will fall into place. Start your front two nuts. Start this rear by hand 
tighten with the eight millimeter socket. And the fronts with a 10 millimeter. We got our Tillotson 212cc engine all built up with our Stage 2 kit. Now we're going to put 16 ounces of this T4 racing oil from Tillotson. We're going to install this center exit drag pipe using a 13 millimeter wrench. I'm going to show you how to hook up this Makuni cable that we sell into this aftermarket 22 carburetor. Put the Makuni slide cap on first, then your spring, work the cable up through the middle of the spring, and then there's a notch here it's the same size as the barrel on the end of the cable. Now on this slide, make sure you don't put it backwards because then your engine will be wide open. There's a slot that goes the length of the slide on this, on this side. And there's a pin in the carburetor. Line up that long slot with the pin. And tighten the cap. We like to start the, the low speed mixture screw at three quarter turnout from bottom. It's located right here, it's on the bottom side of the carburetor body, right under the manifold. You're going to go all the way in, back it out three quarters of a turn. That sounds good. So the, the idle, that's gonna be right here on this side of the carburetor, on the right side. You can use a small flathead or a Phillips head screw. Once you get your mixture set, that's where you really dial in just your idle. It is not a mixture at all. All it does when you go in, it raises the slide. When you back it out, it'll lower the slide. Your choke is right here on the side. This is the enrichener or the choke. When you pull it up, it's going to shoot more fuel into the bowl, suck more fuel out of the bowl. Down is run. Our stage 2 Tillotson 212 on the dyno. Uh, this has the hot 265 cam, the 6689 flywheel the 22 aftermarket Makuni. We're going to crank it up, do a couple runs, and see what kind of power we get.
learned that the HA 265 has a very wide power band. Yeah. It makes really good power from 14 plus horsepower for more than 2,000 RPM, about 3,000 RPM. The peak horsepower was 15.86. Peak torque was 14 and a half at about 5,000. Yep. All right, guys, in this video, we showed you how to build our stage two kit using a 212 cc tillotson engine thanks for watching please hit subscribe below we'll have a link to all these parts in the description